Hey, welcome back to the channel. All right, it's time to update the tier list for the best battlegrounds attackers, defenders, and dual threats. It's a tier list. We've been doing this. We're on season 13 now. We started this before seasons even started, and it was just the CCP as we got everyone uh, going and getting that helpful information out. Now, we are going to talk about the changes and the new champions that have been updated. And at the end, maybe I'll go over the legend a little bit and all that stuff. Remember, a screenshot of this spreadsheet will be posted on my Twitter feed. It is always made to look beautiful by none other than Miss DK, which I greatly appreciate. And then, of course, please go support all of the MCOC Illuminati who share all of their experience and their knowledge in helping create this spreadsheet each and every single month. And then also, I, I cannot emphasize this enough because there's always comments that come in that are like, this champion should be here, this champion should be there. And, and that's fine if they're disagreement, but often... It's very clear that the person just didn't watch the video and they don't understand that dual threats, attackers, and defenders are all extremely important. And the champion is only listed once in each category or in a category. We're not going to have them in a variety of spots. So you may feel like Nick Fury is purely just an attacker, let's say, and you're like, he's one of the best in the game. And you're not necessarily wrong. It's just that we view him as a dual threat and he's listed there. It is not meant to be an insult or a compliment, it's just that's the way the majority of myself and the MCU Studio Lottie use him, okay? So just keep that in mind and make sure you check out the defenders and the attackers. And then I think the last thing before we just fully jump into this is so many commenters and uh, people in my Discord and whatever have talked about how much they've improved in Battlegrounds. And they've talked about this video and then of course the videos of myself and the MCOC Illuminati really helping out and how to use champions and those sorts of things. You really can improve with this. Yes, a larger roster is going to be helpful, but you can't outthink, you can't outplay those players. It happens to me where sometimes someone with a smaller roster will outplay me. And so much of that is by creating your deck, choosing your 30, and then how you do your bans and your drafts. It's before you even play the match. Yes, then you need to execute, which is something very cool about this game. And one of the things that's very helpful in all of this is having ranked up attackers, defenders, and dual threats in your roster. So that way, when the meta is actually released and it is here, you're able to pick from an already ranked up set as opposed to, as opposed to constantly trying to play catch up and being like, oh, this defender, this attacker, what have you. And then you just don't have enough resources to rank them up. I always have like one, two or three on hold so that you can rank up for the current meta. But if you're constantly trying to play catch up, I don't think it's going to work out that well for you. So uh, here we are. Here we are. And, and you've seen me. I've gotten uh, Mysterium 1 last time, Celestial 6 the time before that. You've seen me improve right in front of your very eyes. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, there's not too many changes, which is really cool. I think the tier list is in a really good spot. And shows you, in my opinion, Battlegrounds metas and things have been in a great spot too. So we're in the Mystic. Dual threats. I still feel, for me personally... This is kind of like the initial building block. That's why they're listed first. They are no more important than defenders or attackers, but I even like to draft my dual threats first. That way, depending on how the next rest of the draft goes, I can go defense or attacker and figure that out as we go. The only champion that's new that's going to be talked about in here is Werewolf by Night. Now, last month I said, you know, I think he's a defender. That's the way he was built. Like, or build to us. Uh, but here's the thing, is some of the people that went to the summit, uh, namely Bitter Steel, there's our, our others, but Bitter Steel, and he's shown me so many videos. The power gain on Werewolf by Night is allowing him to just get around so many defenders and nodes and problems that are presented. We talked about this a lot, like with Hyperion or uh, Dragon Man or other champions just have this built in, Hulkling even. And, you know, with Hulkling, you can sometimes kill a bishop before Bishop even gets to throw a special, if you play it a very certain way. Well, Werewolf by Night, and then he has enough damage to get it done. It's really impressive. You do need to have a high skill, but right now I'm gonna place him there. And I do have the Crystal Ball, which means it's early, so be careful on this. There's a little bit of prediction. Also, we're never totally sure until the rebalancing time is over, but based on what I've seen out of Better Steel, this feels really right on. It's just a massive, massive surprise based on, I think, the way the champion was kind of, I don't mean sold to us, but I mean, like, what was in the spotlight and that sort of thing. But hey, here we are. Maybe go and bug bitter still, asking for some gameplay. 
Uh, so you can see it. And maybe some of you are like, no, I have Werewolf by Night, and this is totally, totally correct. And then as we move over there, you can just kind of see these are all champions that can be used offensively or defensively, or they are like a Mysterio is a good one. Mysterio is an excellent defender. Obviously, Cosmic Ghost Rider can just shut him down. But, you know, that's one attacker. And then, no, Mysterio can't take all the defenders uh, when he's on offense, but he's really good for like a Domino or a Rintra, who are two very prevalent defenders, therefore a dual threat in our eyes. Uh, and I think that's about it, right? We've got the video game monster. There's a lot more of that up there now because it is signifying you really need to play them with a high skill level, like Absorbing Man, uh, designed by Daddy Long Legs, right? My friend, DLL. And if you play Absorbing Man well, it very well, you get rewarded for that and you can take a variety of defenders. Otherwise, you know, you put him on defense, really strong defender and that sort of thing. But he's one of my favorite characters to use and probably going to be my next ascension. Okay, let's move on to attackers and look. Okay, now here's the attackers. And again, this is just as important as the dual threats and the defenders. As you can see in the tier above all, we don't have any new changes. We're feeling really good about this list. I think the vision moved up last month, but I think she did well. Those people who knew how to play her. And that's why I'm glad we added the video game monster for the high skill uh, being a large component, Black Cat with the Relic, Mantis, Kate. You know, if you want to do all those things you, that you're seeing us do, me do in Necropolis, Bitter Steel, folks doing it in Necropolis, you got to play her exceptionally well, but she does reward you. It's a common thing with these DLL champions. The first new champion we have is in the Mystic class, and we're putting him in the top shelf. And again, the Illuminati had to remind me, because I had her in the tier of all. And the Illuminati's like, look, Vega, you're probably a little bit biased on this one. You love her so much. She means so much to you. We totally get it. But uh, let's start her off in the top shelf. Let's prove it. And there could be some issues here, right? One of the things I always have problems with, they're not problems, but one of like, I, it's like, okay, we got an issue. Let's keep our eye on this, is when an attacker relies on their debuffs and they have nothing that can allow them to stick. And the reason why that's a problem for me is that means any node that has like a purification or all those skill defenders often just going to remove that attacker from the table. So there is a class that's outside of their opposite opposition in the class will that they already can't take. Now, does that mean the end of the world for them? No, of course not. Look at Nick Fury. But it is something that I want to keep an eye on. Now, if you get her high enough SIG, you're going to have those passives, right? And DLL talked about this in the spotlight video. I also think, though, she's going to be more than enough with the uh, with her SP1, SP2 rotation. I think she's going to be quick enough. I do know you're going to have to play her well. You're going to be very mindful of her blessings and trying to keep uh, all of them up. And as some of that trickier, kind of more high skill play with punishing after specials and things like that in order to get those supremely high scores in Battlegrounds. Now, that's if you're shooting for, you know, Mysterium or Celestial, things like that. If you're not, which is totally okay, there's only like a thousand players in the whole game doing that, I think you're going to get really good results even without that sort of play. But let's keep an eye on it. I'm hoping to uh, use my uh, seven star, hopefully rank three in the not too distant future. And uh, I'll be reporting back uh, my experience there. Let's go and move on to Sandman. You know, Sandman's buff did go live. And so he's not quite as fast as I think it was initially hoped. But let's not underestimate the amount of healing reversal that is there. And then also those immunities. As you can see, there's now attacker, tactic, attacker tactics and different metas where anyone in this top shelf attacker, this is not an insult. These are champions that could, one, fill a hole in your roster and be someone that you're a mainstay, especially if you know how to use them well, or their metas that could very easily make one of them a superstar. We saw that before his buff even went live. This was like three or four seasons ago. He was an absolute superstar. So uh, don't discount that. Then we've got uh, Chilith, who will be new into the game. I think time's going to tell on, on her. She does not appear to be designed for Battlegrounds outside of, uh, what is it? I think it's the Gamma uh, Champions. There are some defenders that fit that, but we don't see them too often into the game. So when you're trying to really put get her into a roster of 30, a deck of 30, it's pretty competitive. And so I don't believe that will be happening. I think she's a very good champion, but this is a Battlegrounds tier list, right? So if you're interested in the Necropolis uh, videos, or if you're interested in the best seven stars to rank three or rank two or six stars to rank up, she's going to be in there. But as far as just pure Battlegrounds, I'm not seeing her having a Battlegrounds role, and that's okay. I, I really think to have a big, broad, healthy game, champions need to come out like that. 
Uh, moving on to Shocker, all I really wanted to do and why we're going to talk about Shocker very briefly is that uh, his buff didn't go live. I believe it's going to go live in December. He is relatively simple to play in comparison to, like, let's say, Tigra or Kushala. So I think it makes sense if his absolute highs are not quite the same. But what I want to see is with his play style, can you take out some of those really tough defenders that we see frequently? Is he able to get around Rintras, Dooms, that sort of thing? How does, and if, does he struggle against your uh, skill defenders, right? Who might be shrugging things or things like that? Kingpin, uh, Nick Fury with the two lives. Defenders we're seeing a lot. He's clearly built nicely for war and battlegrounds, but then so much of it then de depends on how are the players actually playing it? Who are the defenders the players are actually placing? So I think only time will tell on that. Looking forward to that buff going live in December. Now let's go ahead and look at the third building block, which is defenders. In, in defenders, we really don't have any new champions coming in. The the two newest champions being Kushala and Chila. They uh, both, I think, are have something you need to be aware of as far as defensive capabilities are concerned, but I think they're more built as attacking options. Uh, we were completely wrong, though, with Werewolf by Night, so we will always keep an eye on that and update as things change so that people can make their rank ups accordingly and, and take this in as uh, an information piece. And then, of course, as always, make sure you go and do your own research and play the channel, make sure you like them. Uh, Wong, Wong is an interesting one. I have a feeling we're gonna see a lot of rank two Wongs, maybe even some rank threes. With that increase, might see him offensively uh, used to definitely a problematic defender. You might see me wanting to take my Wong uh, to rank two very, very soon. Uh, I duped my Ebony Moss, so I might be bringing him up. He obviously can be used offensively as well. So many of these Mystics are, are defenders who can also be used offensively. Mystic Dispersion is really helping out. Uh, Kindred, they decided they weren't going to buff him. I think if you know how to fight him, you're going to probably have a pretty good time fighting him. But even then, his ramp can happen and things can go wrong and you can really suffer as a result uh and that's it uh these are all the champions we're about to start seeing havoc as a seven star that could start to be a real problem and then of course with necropolis getting done and uh cyber weekend we're gonna start seeing more rank twos ascended champions and maybe even some rank threes and we will adjust uh on the tier list as that starts to happen but the, there you go. That's the tier list for this month. It's in a great place. I'm very happy with it. So we'll get to be a little bit quicker in these videos, which is uh, always nice. The spreadsheet will be linked in the description, but just follow me on Twitter. You can get the screenshot right there made beautifully by Miss DK. And, uh, and there's the legend. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. If you have any questions about the legend, please read it. Try to understand it. And if you still really have a question, you can write it in the comment section and uh, me or someone else will do their best to answer it. Make sure you support that MCSU Illuminati. Hope you have a wonderful season 13. Thank you so much for watching.